on your corner, in your corner. This is WJZ News at 11. Former President Donald Trump took the stage in Milwaukee, Wisconsin tonight, officially accepting the Republican nomination for president for the third campaign cycle in a row. Welcome to the News at 11. I'm Vic Carter. Tonight's keynote speech in Milwaukee lasted well over an hour. His first since he survived an assassination attempt at a rally in Pennsylvania this past Saturday. In that speech, Trump emphasized a pillar of his campaign, a crackdown on illegal immigration, mentioning the murder of Harford County's Rachel Morin. I also met recently with the heartbroken mother and sister of Rachel Morin. Rachel was a 37-year-old mom of five beautiful children who was brutally raped and murdered while out on a run. She wanted to keep herself in good shape. It was very important to her. She was murdered. The monster responsible first killed another woman in El Salvador before he was led into America by the White House. This White House let them in. Trump spoke on a number of other hot-button issues in his address. We'll have more from Milwaukee ahead in a live report later in this broadcast. Now, over on the Democratic side of the presidential campaign tonight, the number of Democratic lawmakers calling for President Joe Biden to end his bid for re-election is growing, including among Maryland leaders. Congressman Jamie Raskin didn't go as far as some others, but a spokesperson for Raskin tells WJZ in a letter he asked Biden to consider dropping out of the race. In that letter, Raskin compared Biden to a baseball pitcher at the end of a game, saying, quote, there is no shame in taking a well-deserved bow to the overflowing appreciation of the crowd when your arm is tired out. And there is real danger for the team in ignoring the statistics. Caucus with the team, Mr. President, hear them out. You will make the right decision, end quote. While there is division on who should be the party's nominee, time is not on the side of the Democrats. Party leaders say they need to have the nominee officially set by August the 7th. They're concerned a deadline in the state of Ohio could give Republicans who currently control all three branches of government in that state an opportunity to keep the Democratic ticket off the ballot. Meanwhile, Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott says a practical matter, the only person who could realistically step in is Vice President Kamala Harris. If the president decides to drop out, right, then the vice president should be the nominee, period. It's literally the reason why we have the position. If you are running the risk of having your party lose of the group of people who have saved this country in election after election after election in black women, and I want you to know that they are watching you very closely. A new CBS News poll shows over the past few days, Trump has gained an advantage of five points head-to-head in a matchup against President Biden. The president lost 1% and Trump gained 2% since July the 3rd. That same poll shows Trump holds a similar but smaller edge in a hypothetical matchup against current Vice President Kamala Harris. Turning now to the weather, a day we've been waiting for for what feels like weeks as the brutal stretch of near record heat broke and gave us a balmy day in the 80s. First alert weather chief meteorologist Derek Beasy joins us now with a look at the forecast. Derek. Well Vic looks like Friday shaping up to be a pretty nice day. We're seeing a nice drop in humidity something we've been waiting for all week long. We saw a bit of a preview of that here on your Thursday afternoon. It looks like as we head into your Friday we're going to see a continuation of that. So again here's what's next here overnight tonight. We're expecting clearing skies comfortable humidity for your Friday and then we've got some chances for spotty showers making their return to the forecast here as we head into to the upcoming weekend as temperatures right now across the area on this early Friday morning, generally into the 70s. We're at 78 for the Inner Harbor. Right now we're at 74 out at BWI Thurgood Marshall. So again, as you wake up uh, tomorrow morning, we're expecting skies to be mostly sunny. We're expecting temperatures into the lower 70s, some upper 60s. So a nice comfortable start to the day with low humidity. Looks like by late morning we're going to be up into the upper 70s. And then tomorrow afternoon's highs, or at least Friday afternoon's highs, are going to top out into the mid to upper 80s. We're going to talk more about that weekend forecast. Humidity and rain chances making their return in the next week. Your first alert forecast is coming up. Big back to you. Derek, thank you. Tonight, the Baltimore Police Commissioner is defending an officer shown on body camera video pressing a gun against the head of a man who was restrained on the ground. A warning, you will see the incident unfold through that footage. 24-year-old Jamal Joyner was arrested in May for possession of a handgun. The charges were dropped earlier this week, but tonight his attorney tells WJZ police arrested the wrong man. WJZ is at Baltimore Police Headquarters. Christina Mendez spoke with the man's mother about the incident. 
Jamon Joyner's mother says he suffered from this incident, calling him damaged and scarred. But the police commissioner has a different take on what went down, saying the officer was doing his job and is not suspended. A forewarning, you will see this incident unfold on body-worn camera video. Terrified, traumatized, hurt, disgusted. Words the mother of 24 year old Jamon Joyner uses to describe watching this recently released Baltimore police body camera video from May. For upwards of seven seconds, footage shows an officer holding a handgun to Joyner's head. Everything don't have to be resolved with a gun being drawn and not just drawn to someone's head. In the moments leading up to this, police went out to Washington Street to investigate an armed robbery. Charging documents state officers believed Joyner was a suspect and tried to put him in handcuffs but attempted to run away. Attorney Tony Garcia, who represents Joyner, says his client was in the area paying respects to a friend's memorial and did not match the description given to police by the victim. So the only thing he shares with these armed robbers is the color of his skin. Charging documents state Joyner was found with a loaded handgun. But Garcia says the response was excessive. It was outrageous. It was over the top. And it's brutal. Police Commissioner Richard Worley came to the defense of the officer in question at an unrelated news conference. I've been in that position that officer was in. You're scared. You're fighting for your life because you don't know what he's going to do. This week, the charges against Joyner were dropped mere days before attorneys say the trial was set to start Thursday. He was released from jail after spending more than 50 nights there. An experience family says has changed him. It's no relief nowhere because my son is suffering. BPD confirms there is an ongoing investigation into this incident as well as an internal affairs probe. Meanwhile, Joyner's attorneys are weighing their options on a civil suit. I'm reporting from BPD headquarters. I'm Christina Mendez for WJZ. Earlier tonight, a judge in Baltimore City ruled the videotape conversation with police will remain in evidence against Jason Billingsley. He's the man accused of murdering Pavel LaPere last year. Billingsley's defense lawyer said the tape shows, quote, a very problematic departure from the procedure used to advise suspects of their right to remain silent. The tape shows Billingsley asked, quote, am I waiving my rights? And is told by police it's a formality so they can discuss the case. Prosecutors argue the defense did not file the motion to exclude the tapes in a timely manner. Billingsley is also accused of attacking a couple in their home in Upton. Attacking a man, sexually assaulting and slashing a woman before setting her on fire, that attack happened days before he killed LaPere at her apartment in Mount Vernon. Seven members of a Baltimore drug ring are now off the streets and facing charges after a months long investigation. Those suspects, the so-called Dickeyland Boys, range from 24 to 34 years old and allegedly operated in the Gay Street neighborhood. Three of the suspects have already pleaded guilty to drug charges and have been sentenced to three years supervised probation and referred to a violence diversion program. Two others have hearings scheduled in the coming weeks. Another has a trial date in October. Drivers, you may want to listen up. Maryland Transportation Authority is raising tolls on the Bay Bridge and the Harbor Tunnels starting in 2027. It's a story we first brought to you last night. This toll hike will go into effect a year ahead of schedule to deal with the revenue lost from the key bridge collapse. WJZ is in your corner tonight. Kelsey Kushner has more on what you can expect and how some Marylanders are feeling about the increase. Right now, it's not known how much more money people are going to have to dish out, only that it's happening in 2027. And some drivers that we spoke with say they want transportation officials to pump the brakes. It's definitely inconvenient. Bridget Hillslop drives through the Harbor Tunnel every day to get to work in Baltimore City, costing her more than $100 a month in Easy Pass bills alone. Definitely not ideal for me, at least, to be having more expensive tolls. Pretty soon, she'll be dishing out more money while on the road as the Maryland Transportation Authority is set to raise the tolls for the Bay Bridge and Harbor Tunnels in 2027, blaming the price jump on the economic fallout from the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse. While drivers tell us they empathize with the tragedy, they don't think the financial impact of it should fall on their wallets. Tolls is okay where it's at. Don't, okay. get, don't increase. 
you can always decrease, but don't increase. Just how much drivers will be paying is still in question as Congress remains stalled over a bill that would foot the entire bill of rebuilding the key bridge. Right now, drivers are paying anywhere from three to six dollars to pass through both tunnels in Baltimore City and over the Bay Bridge in Annapolis. MDTA says they originally planned to increase prices in 2028 due in part to inflation, but after losing revenue from the collapsed bridge, they had no choice but to move it up a year. And Drivers like Brian Claiborne say the cost is already too high. Cost of living is already high. Food getting in your gas is high, products are high, toilet paper is high, toothpaste is high, groceries are high, and then you want to tax us once again on the bridge. Transportation officials say the cost to rebuild the bridge could be about $1.7 billion, meaning the state's contribution will be about $170 million. On your corner in Baltimore, Kelsey Kushner, WJZ. And on your corner in Baltimore County, the Liberty Road corridor will soon look a lot different in the near future after county leaders break ground on a new grocery store. The new supermarket will bring more jobs and create easier paths for grocery shopping for an area some call a food desert. Neighbors we spoke with say the supermarket will mean a lot to the local community. I know what it means to just get up and drive down the street just to be able to get a bag of oranges and a loaf of bread. The convenience is going to mean absolutely everything. County leaders expect the supermarket to open for business next year. And as we've been telling you, Amtrak is working on the Frederick Douglass Tunnel program to set to run through West Baltimore. Earlier tonight, Amtrak unveiled designs for the project's new Mark train station. The Frederick Douglass Tunnel program will replace the 150-year-old BNP tunnel with two modern tunnels and a new rail system. The new West Baltimore Mark station will feature an enclosed waiting area and enhanced lighting, restrooms, and drop-off areas. Also be fully ADA accessible and connect to bus and light rail lines. Amtrak and MDOT are developing a timeline for construction. The overall tunnel project is set to be completed by 2035. Still to come on WJZ News at 11, your monthly budget could soon take a hit of hundreds of dollars a month. What you need to know as a student loan payment program is now on hold after a challenge in the courts. Plus, late breaking details out of Israel as an explosion rattles Tel Aviv. What we know as an American embassy was not far from the blast. And live from Milwaukee, we're getting a closer look at the closing night of the RNC. Developing at this hour in Israel, we're tracking reports of an explosion in Tel Aviv. The Times of Israel reports police say seven people had minor injuries. The cause of the blast has not been confirmed, but the Times reports the military and police are looking into the possibility of a drone attack. The site of the blast is not far from the U.S. Embassy, but it's not clear the blast had any specific target. Response to the Israel-Hamas war has been a concern for voters this election. So has student loan debt relief. And today, a federal appeals court put a hold on the student loan save plan, just as borrowers were about to see their monthly payments reduced. Today's ruling in the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals put the brakes on the entire plan. Parts of it were already frozen by other challenges. The save plan recalculates monthly payments based on income. The Department of Education says it will reach out directly to the 8 million borrowers enrolled with how the ruling impacts them. We're going to turn back now to the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee, which came to a close within the past half hour. Former President Donald Trump spoke for the first time since surviving an assassination attempt, laying out his vision for a second term. We rise together or we fall apart. I am running to be president for all of America, not half of America, because there is no victory in winning for half of America. So tonight, with faith and devotion, I proudly accept your nomination for President of the United States. Thank you. And CBS News correspondent Natalie Brand joins us once again from Milwaukee. And Natalie, this was a big night for the Republicans. And the Trump campaign had indicated we would hear a different Trump. Did he, in fact, accomplish that? 
You know, some Republicans here believe that he did. They were looking to hear a softer Trump tonight, and they did, they say, sense a softer tone uh, and a message of trying to bring Republicans together. And at the beginning of this speech, we did see a much more somber, reflective Trump detailing uh, Saturday's shooting, the attempted assassination, saying a bullet came within a quarter of an inch of taking his life. There was this moment when he said, I'm not supposed to be here. The crowd chanted, yes, you are. And he said, by the grace of God, I'm here. Then, you know, in the back half of this speech, it did sound like more of a traditional Trump campaign speech. Uh, Notably, he didn't mention President Biden's name more than once, although he did spend a lot of time attacking uh, policies of the Biden administration, issues important to Republicans here from the economy to border security to uh, public safety. Uh, but overall, again, delegates and Republicans say that they wanted to hear a message of unity. They wanted this week to be about Republicans and Americans coming together. And the audience in here, the very supportive folks of former President Trump, they believe he accomplished that. Earlier, we talked uh, this afternoon with you just prior to his speech uh, today, and we were questioning who all from his family would be there. And then this is the first time we've seen Melania Trump. How was she received, and was it a surprise to many people that she was there? It was because it was kind of kept under wraps and we were wondering, questioning whether or not we would see her. But, you know, this evening for the first time during this Republican National Convention, she arrived in the convention hall to watch uh, her husband's speech, as well as Ivanka Trump. We had not seen her either. I mean, these are key members of uh, Trump's previous White House bid, uh, and, and this week they were largely absent except for tonight. So tonight we did see his entire family supporting him, watching this speech in the family box. And without question, everyone, uh, not only his supporters, but, you know, without question, no one's been impacted more by the events of this past week than his family. Okay, Natalie Brand, great job for, uh, to you and the entire CBS crew out there. Thank you so much for keeping us informed. And, of course, that's concluding our coverage of this year's RNC in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Again, Natalie, thank you. Time now to take a look at our weather. We had quite a different day today than we've had the past few days, and we're hoping that that streak will continue. Derek. Well, at least for one day, Vic, and it looks like uh, Friday is going to be the day with the lowest humidity. I really think for the next seven days, Friday is going to be the best day, and it looks like uh, for the weekend, it's not going to be bad, but we're going to have a little bit more humidity around a few more clouds too, particularly on Saturday, and also some chances for rain across our area. So let's go right to your forecast, show the radar tonight, and we are looking at a clean sweep across the area. Parts of southern Maryland, the lower eastern shore saw a little bit of rain across the area this, uh, during fr uh, Thursday afternoon, but looks like Friday is going to be dry after a comfortable night. Uh, so sunshine and temperatures in the mid to upper 80s for your Friday, and then the humidity is going to make its return for the weekend. Temperatures upper 60s now for Bel Air, as well as over towards parts of the eastern shore. Columbia down to 69.74 here in Baltimore out of BWI Thurgood Marshall. So again, temperatures by morning are going to drop down to the low 70s, some upper 60s, so a nice comfortable start to the day. And then, as I mentioned, a mixture of cloud and sunshine for your Friday afternoon with highs in the mid to upper 80s. The front that came through the area last night to this morning has now dropped to the south here. All the mugginess and all the storms were actually down towards the Virginia Tidewater. Uh, but we're starting to see skies clear out. We've got a north to northeast wind that's bringing that nice low humidity into our region. But the front is going to start advancing back to the north as a warm front as early as late this afternoon. As future cast shows, we're just going to stay mostly sunny to partly cloudy here throughout the day Friday and dry. Again, as I mentioned, the temperatures mid to upper 80s. And then the front is going to begin advancing back to the north as a warm front by late Friday night and into Saturday morning. Now, it looks like the weekend is going to be, at least Saturday, is going to be mainly rain-free for most of us, but we're going to be tracking the front as well as upper-level disturbances that will be crossing the area, and we will see a few showers sparking off with that. Right now, uh, it looks like southern areas or areas south of Baltimore will be most favorable 
for chances for rain on uh, Saturday, but we've got a chance for rain in the forecast here for your Saturday. And then for Sunday, we've got another opportunity for some showers in the forecast as the front will be in the vicinity. We're going to have more upper level disturbances, so maybe a storm or two popping up uh, throughout the afternoon. But uh, again, not a washout for the weekend, but there will be some stray rain chances across the area. So here's a look at your rain chances for the next six days or so, and it looks like they really start to ramp up, particularly by the middle part of the week. So we're looking at uh, Monday, Tuesday, and especially Tuesday and Wednesday, we're going to see the best opportunities for showers across the area, and we may even have a few heavier downpours in there. Our drought situation is getting worse here in Maryland. We need some rain, and we're going to have some opportunities next week. So here's your forecast for your Friday. Expecting again highs in the mid to upper 80s, low humidity, 70s at the beaches and out in far western Maryland and the mountains. Otherwise, pretty nice day shaping up. As I mentioned, your Friday is going to be the best day of the next seven days. Weekend again, not too bad. High 85 on Saturday with mostly cloudy skies and a slight chance for a shower. Scattered storms on Sunday and then better rain chances coming in, especially Tuesday into Wednesday of next week. So there's a much needed rain on the way. Mark. Derek, thank you. The All-Star break comes to a close and it's time to get back to baseball. The Orioles had a team workout in Texas ahead of their series opener with the Rangers. We'll catch up with the rested up O's next in sports. Tomorrow morning on WJZ, it's the start of Baltimore Restaurant Week. Why these restaurants need your support now more than ever and look at some of the deals. We're getting you ready for a fantastic Friday. Wake up with us. Mark is here now with sports. Of course, the Orioles have been burning it at both ends after the All-Star break and so forth, and they needed a break. They got their break, and now they're back to work. Yeah, players refer to the baseball season as a marathon, but in this long-distance run, teams do get a rest midway through for the All-Star break. The Orioles had five players in the Midsummer Classic in Texas. Now the rest of the team has joined them there. It's a return to the side of the O's playoff ouster to the Rangers last October. But the O's are back strong. They're in first place again this year. A Thursday evening workout to warm up for the resumption of the season. They have three games with the Rangers starting tomorrow night. The All-Star break was much needed as the O's struggled in the final week. They lost five of their last six games, but now they're rested and ready to complete another playoff run. It's always awesome when you get to recharge the batteries and go home. Uh, I was watch the Derby, watch the All-Star game, so... I'm ready to get back and, and play some more ball. We're in first place going in the second half, so that's all you could ask for at this point in the season. So we'll just keep playing the ball we've been playing all year, and we'll be in a good spot. All-star Cor Corbin Burns is the O starting pitcher for that series opener in Arlington on Friday night. Basketball action in the NBA Summer League. Former Terp Jameer Young, number 10 for the Denver Nuggets, came off the bench to show his stuff against Indiana. It was Young's best game yet. 18 points, seven rebounds for the former Terp. An undrafted rookie like many in the summer league working to make a good impression. Jameer Young leads Denver to a win. Women's pro lacrosse opening day of the Athletes Unlimited League in Sparks, Maryland. The nation's top players divided into four teams. Bel Air native Maggie Hall played at college at Florida. Knocked down but gets up for a hard-earned goal. Hall scored four times in this game. They have double header action at the U.S. Lacrosse Complex in Sparks on Saturday and Sunday. Englishman Daniel Brown is the surprise leader after the first round of golf's British Open. He's ranked 272nd in the world. He's playing in his first ever major, but it's Brown who has a one-shot lead over Ireland's Shane Lowry. American Justin Thomas is next. He is three shots back. Rick, back to you. Okay, Mark, thank you so much. The news continues right after this. ¿Estás protegida cerca de mí? ¿Ahí? ¿O haciendo eso? Nido Uno Más tiene vitaminas y nutrientes que ayudan a que tenga un crecimiento y desarrollo saludable. Nido, tu amor, su futuro. Exciting news. There's a new podcast coming to you every Thursday called The Weekly Show with John Stewart because I have no imagination. Listen to The Weekly Show with John Stewart wherever you get your podcasts. Longtime TV news anchor Lou Dobbs has died. Dobbs was among the first on-air personalities when CNN launched and spent more than 20 years at the network before leaving in 2009. From there, he went to Fox Business Network and became one of the network's most vocal supporters of Donald Trump. 
His promotion of conspiracy theories falsely claiming voting infrastructure stole the 2020 election led to massive lawsuits against the network and the cancellation of his show. Dobbs was 78. We're also remembering Bob Newhart, the comedian and actor who starred in two major hit sitcoms for CBS in the 1970s and 80s, along with a long list of film and TV roles. Newhart died in Los Angeles, according to his publicist, after a series of short illnesses. An accountant who gave comedy a try, Newhart hit a home run out of the gate with the smash hit record album that won him three Grammy Awards. Newhart's stock in trade was playing the low-key straight man surrounded by oddballs. Newhart was 94. We'll be right back. Well, starting tonight, the landscape of Baltimore sports coverage will undergo a significant change. We bid farewell to one of the most esteemed professionals in broadcasting, our own beloved Mark Viviano. From athletes to team owners, co-workers to family and friends, Mark has profoundly impacted us all. His humble approach, caring spirit, deep religious convictions, and unparalleled knowledge and passion for sports have transformed our community. We will feel his absence deeply on the night team, and we know that viewers and listeners alike will miss his presence on our broadcast. Mark, we wish you nothing but the best, and thank you for your tireless dedication to making Baltimore a better place through your absolutely exceptional work. And I count, among other people, just an honor to have had a chance to get to know you and work with you. Thank you. Uh, WJZ is a family to me, 22 years here. I actually met my wife here. Yeah. Uh, Baltimore, you've been so great. And we, my family and I, appreciate so much how you've welcomed us and trusted us to do what we do here. And, uh, you know, people have asked me, what was your favorite story? And truly, my answer is, just to have been able to do a job I wanted to do since I was seven years old yeah. and to do it for as long as I was able uh, is just a blessing. So nothing but gratitude. I'll still be around. Yes. I'll be in the, uh, in the area. We'll be doing some uh, charity work, and I can't wait to see more of you out there. I just won't be on TV. So. <laughs> How about Mark, that? We're certainly going to miss you. I know it's been an absolute pleasure working with you. You're just the definition of class and professionalism, mm -hmm. and it's been great to watch you work, and we're going to miss you. Thank yes. you, guys. Yeah. And this night team, I mean, it's just the guys yeah. here at night yeah. and everything. <laughs> we actually have a really good time, and it's, uh, it's going to be uh, quite a transition. Yeah. Well, coming up live on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, and music from One Republic. We'll see you later.